This video is a production of the YouthQuest Foundation, serving America's at-risk youth. Hi there, this is Tom Meeks of YouthQuest Foundation. Well, last year I had a ball at the Free State Challenge Academy. I loved working with the cadets, I loved working with the staff. This year we're going to expand our program and we're not only going to be at the Free State Challenge Academy, but we're also going to be at DC's Capital Guardian Challenge Academy. Now this means that I have to split my time between the two locations. And sometimes you're going to be alone when students have problems and students have questions. So what we've decided to do is to prepare some videotapes to help you get ahead of the curve so you'll be ready when those questions come up. And the very first thing we need to do is talk about the Cube 3D printer that we'll be using in your classes. Each of you will have two 3D printers and they will be exactly the same colors, they'll work exactly the same ways, they're exactly the same kind of printer. But each of the printers is a unique individual printer that will have its own behavior. And sometimes we can have some issues with these printers and I want to make sure that you understand what to do when those issues come up. So let me go through a few things. First, let's talk about the components of the 3D printer that you're going to be putting together. We have the filament. This is the plastic that we actually use. We have a tube that goes between this cartridge and the filament goes into it that goes into the head or the print jet of the 3D printer. We have the print table that is the item is on. And so each of those has to be put together exactly the right way for this to work. Let's start with the cartridge. Now the, when you get the cartridge or open up a new cartridge, it's going to have a screw here. You need to unscrew that. So what we need to do is take that out, put it aside. You may need it later if you change colors. The most important thing I can show you is that when you put this cartridge into place, put it in at the top and rotate it slowly and carefully into place. Now there's a specific time when you do that and we're going to be walking through that process right now. So if you don't mind, I'm going to be leaning over sometimes. It'll be a little bit awkward to see me because I need to be able to read this. Okay, so let me get up here and I'm going to... I'm going to... What happens is I'm going to push load cartridge on the display after I turn the printer on. So I'm going to say load cartridge. We're going to we'll leave this off. It'll ask me if there's already filament in there or not. Well, in this case, it's not, so I'm going to say OK. Then it's going to tell me that it's warming up. And the message says, remove the thumb screw. That's the screw I told you about. And then as soon as you've done that, there's a little arrow. You push that arrow. Now, it says install the cartridge. And this is where you slide that cartridge carefully into place, like that, OK? Then reading the directions, it says install the cartridge. Then it says, okay, clip, clip the end of your cartridge. Now you really need to do this because if you have a bent end, it's going to go down in and not go in fully and could create a clog. So make sure you just take a pair of scissors or cutters and cut off the end. Okay. It says now thread the filament through this. We've done that. Okay. Insert the filament into the head. Now, there's a hole here, and I'm going to put the filament in here. And I'm just going to push it down very lightly. What will happen is that this head will heat up, and it will start pulling the filament down into the head. And as it does so, some filament is going to flow. And it takes a little time. But don't be impatient. Just very lightly press on it to make sure that it's going down in. You don't have to push hard, just very lightly. The filament is now starting to come down. 
onto the print table. Just let it roll and it will finally stop. And when it's ready to go, it will tell you that it's ready to go to the next step. When that is done, you'll push this down flush here and you'll push this part of the tube down into the little hole in the cartridge. So by doing that, you now give a channel for the filament to flow. Just let it do its thing until it feels that it is ready to go. And then when it's ready, it'll go back to the end. See that? It was pretty easy, but it does take a little while. If you get that far, you do not have a clog. However, if you wait that long and you don't see it coming out, then you have a clog. If you have a clog, call me. I'll help you walk through it. Next step, um, we're going to take that little tab off just before we go to print. By the way, there will always be a little bit of tab right there. That will break off, the, and we'll do that just before we print. The next step, and let me turn this around so you can see it better. I want to show you is the print table. The print table is held in the place with a magnet. Sometimes if you go to put this in, it will not seat fully. Please, whatever you do, make sure that every time you put this print table in, you're in, work it back and forth, make sure it's level, make sure it's in place. Because if you don't do that, it's going to ruin your print gap, which I'll talk to you about in the next step. Well, the first thing you want to do, be careful doing this. I usually do that with pliers. I've broken off that little tip. The, the next thing that you want to do before you put any glue on this table is you want to gap the head. Again, it's going to look a little weird because I got to lean over to see what I'm doing. But you use a post-it note, but you do it in two steps. All right. So you go to set up, go over to where it says set gap. Now, when you hit set gap, this is going to come up and this gap is way too tight. I can tell already. So this gap is no good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lower this arrows up and down. I'm going to lower the gap down and I'm going to go way beyond where I need to be. Okay. And I'm going to say, okay. Now what I did was I reset the gap, but I set it way low. And that's because it had already come up and hit the head. We don't want that to happen. So the first time, make sure you lower your gap to where you can see that there's a sizable gap. Now we're going to do that again, and this time we're going to use our paper. So I'm going to say set gap. It's going to go up to where it was before. All right, but this time I'm going to use this paper. I'm going to put this on here. And I'm going to slide this back and forth very carefully till I get some resistance right there. Can you hear that? There's some resistance. And I'm going to say, OK. Now, I've now set my gap correctly, which is the gap should be about the thickness of a post-it note. Now, the next step in the process is to prepare the plate for the glue. Now this is cube stick. Be sure it says cube stick. If it says magic glue, that is a glue for the first generation 3D printer. You need to have the one that says cube stick. Now let me take this table off. And every time you clean this, I suggest you do this. Coat the entire table with a very, very, very thin coat of glue. Now, when I say very thin, I mean thin. Please don't have a bunch of ridges. Now, you're going to have some ridges when you start, but just keep working it out until it is really on there thinly, okay? Go back and forth, go in circles, go whatever it takes to get that glue a very, very thin coat, okay? There you go. Now, let that dry. And what that does, it's like putting sizing on a wall. It gives you a base coat of this glue that takes up any of the moisture that might be on this table when you washed it. Let it dry a little bit. But just before you go to print your piece, make sure you put another layer of glue on just in the area where you think that print is going to go and use a circular motion and go out. Again, use a very thin layer of glue. 
Now, when you put the plate back on, as I said, make sure that plate is properly seated. If it's like this or like this or, you know, really rock it back and forth to see that it's in place. Now, when you go to print, and I'm not going to do that right now, when you go to print, make sure you watch that print start. If it moves around at all, then you need to abort that print right away, put some more glue on, get rid of the filament that's on there, put some more glue on, and then restart the print. Watch that first layer because that first layer is the most critical layer of your print. Once that's down, it should work fine, but you may have to keep an eye on it. Now, the other problem that you may have is just the opposite. At the end of your print job, you may find that it's difficult to take a piece off. If you find that it's difficult to take a piece off, then use the palette knife that we're going to be giving you to slip under the piece and pry it off. You may have to put it under some water. Use warm water and, and pry it off. Sometimes it can be difficult. Sometimes it's a piece of cake. It all depends on the piece and the print. So those are the biggest things that you'll run into. But here's the most critical one of all. You put the cartridge in. Now, what if you want to change the cartridge? I'll show you a trick. Again, we go back to our setup, load cartridge. Now, loading the cartridge also is for changing the cartridge, but this time you're going to say yes, the, the check mark, you're going to say yes, there is filament in here. Now, it's going to give you a series of messages that may or may not be confusing. But we're going to, we, we've come up with a trick to help us. I'm going to use a magic marker and I'm going to mark the filament about a quarter inch or a half inch above the opening. Because what's going to happen is that it's going to heat up, it's going to pull the filament down in first to get all the filament soft so that it can pull it out. And then it's going to reverse direction and bring it up. If you try to yank on that filament, you can break it off. So we want to go with the flow. We want to go with the cube. Let's watch. Pull the cube's tube up. And that's this tube right here. Okay, now it's heating. And again, it takes a little time. In a minute, you'll see this black mark going down into the printer. In fact, it's going down in now, and you'll see filament coming out of the bottom. Just let that happen. And here's where we have to be patient. It's going to tell you to pull on that, but you don't want to pull on that until it's ready for you to pull it out. And there's a way for you to see that because we made a way. All right, again, it's continuing to pull that down. Now, once it feels that the filament is warm enough, it's going to back up and start pulling the filament out. It's now reverse direction, I think, and pretty soon we should see our black mark come out of the top. When you see the black mark come back out, then you can lightly pull on the filament uh, just enough to know that when it releases it, you can pull it out. There's our black mark. So now I'm pulling it up very slightly. Do not pull too hard because if you break your filament, you've got a clogged machine. Now I can get it unclogged, uh, but still it's better not to clog it. They actually give you a tool to help you unclog your machine. And by the way, all 3D printers that use this type of material have this problem. This is not unique to the cube. There we go. And see, pulled it out very easily. And that's because we were patient and we used this black mark to tell us when the cube was ready to have that pulled out. Well, those are the hints that I have. Now you repeat the process. You go back, install a new cube cartridge. You, you put the new cartridge in here. And if this is not empty, you pull this out and always replace the little screw that you took out. Well, I'm looking forward to this class, and I hope this is helpful to you to go over 
just before you start using your own cube. And I urge you to do this before the class starts. Thanks a lot.